there are times when you do need a big lens like this, a big zoom lens like this. Yes, it's not to compensate for size of your penis if you're a man, but to zoom into things which are far away from you. And today Sigma have announced this massive, heavy, giant Sigma a DGDN 60mm to 600 f4.5 to f6.3. And today I'm out here to try to photograph some birds, some elusive birds with it. Is this lens for you? Is this a focal range for you? Is this lens delivering amazing results? Keep watching, don't skip, and hopefully in this video I'll answer all your questions. After a week or so shooting or trying to shoot with this lens due to constant rain and the wind in this country at this time of year, I am very impressed with this new lens offering from Sigma. This 60 to 600 mm DGDN OS Sport is an upgrade to an older HSM version. It is designed specifically for mirrorless cameras and it comes in this E mount and L mount versions. Sigma is known for outstanding quality at the right price, and this lens is no exception. It delivers almost a standard field of view at 60 mm, great for general type of shooting, landscape, architecture, and more. And also at the other end of its focal range, 600 mm, a telephoto beast ideal for sports, wildlife, and anything that you can't get physically close to. That's 10 times zoom range, first for mirrorless cameras. The autofocus is silent, very responsive, and most importantly, accurate. It's not a wide aperture lens, and at the wide end, it is only f4.5, but that closes down as soon as you reach 80 millimeter to f5.0, f5.6 at about 140 millimeter, and uh, f6.3 from about 400 millimeters to the end 600. The challenges that might present is that you need plenty of light to be able to crank the shutter speed up to capture fast moving birds, animals, or sports. It is a daytime outdoor lens without any doubt, and you'll get the best out of it on a good sunny day, which is rare here in the north of UK. Very rare today. There is almost zero chromatic aberration visible, but flaring when shooting towards the sun or strong light sources could be a little bit overpowering and affect the photos a bit more than I expected from a lens in this class. It is a big and heavy lens, but built-in lens stabilization is really good, making it absolutely possible to shoot with it handheld, even video at 600 mm fully zoomed in. With lenses like this, with a magnification like this, even the smallest handshake or movement is hugely magnified, making it impossible or very difficult to shoot with handheld but here this is not a problem at all stabilization this good allows you to shoot with slightly slower shooter speeds than recommended and still nail sharp photos or not shaky video very impressive 60 to 600 millimeter is a very versatile range usually these big telephoto lenses are just that lenses to capture things far away from you but this allows you uh, allows you to go wider uh, to making it a more all-purpose lens apart from the fact that it is very big and very heavy. It's not a lens to carry with you all day long on a day out with a family. The focal range makes it also super for all kinds of close-up photography and you get 1 to 2.4 magnification at 200 millimeter. The minimum focusing distance 45 centimeter at 60 millimeter and extending to quite substantial 2.6 meters at 600 millimeter. But 200 millimeter is your sweet spot to get that maximum magnification ratio. Good news for all of you video shooters, there is no focus breathing throughout its zoom range at all. Even though it is not a wide aperture lens, you get a really nice blurred background subject to background separation and bokeh more you zoom in with it due to the zoom compression. This is when your subject is closer to you than the background is to the subject. More you step back and more you zoom in, more blurred background you are going to see in your images and video. The blurred background will also seem much closer to your subject than it really is, making it look really cool and much different than what you see shot with primes or even shorter zooms than this. And yes, it's great for shooting people with, you do need a space to get that best out of the, the effect this lens creates, the zoom compression effect. I am probably 50 meters away, maybe 40, 40 meters away from the camera and closer I get, the more the background's gonna blur due to zoom compression. Builds. 
do I need to say it again? It is a big and heavy lens. It comes with its own shoulder padded bag as it will not easily fit to most of standard camera bags. It rocks a massive 105 millimeter filter thread, so not cheap to buy filters for it. The lens extends by 95 millimeters when zooming in, making it even bigger. It comes with this big lens hood, yes, making it even bigger again. The, the hood has got rubberized rim for standing the lens upright when your arms say no to it. And when talking about the weight, it is actually the heaviest lens I have ever shot with. It weighs whopping 2,500 grams, not nearly, two and a half kilograms, nearly two and a half kilograms, which is a lot for a, for a lens on the end of the camera. You don't put the lens on the camera, you put the camera on the lens. You don't carry it by the camera because you might damage the mount uh, on it. It's, the, it's definitely a lens, uh, a specialist lens. There's no hiding, it is a specialist lens. There's few switches on the lens. The lock switch uh, to lock the zoom in at 60, or 600 millimeter. This copy I have here on loan from Sigma has got lens creeping present. It just extends by itself when pointed down. I must say, this is not usual for Sigmas and it might be just this pre-release copy I have here. Who knows? There are three focus hold buttons. These can be programmed to different functions by the camera, but all three to one and the same function at the time. Standard auto manual focus switch, focus limiter, very handy to speed lenses responsiveness, the focusing responsiveness by limiting the focus range when you don't need it to focus on anything far away or very close. You simply stick it in the range you are shooting at at the given moment. And there are two stitches controlling optical stabilization. First one is OS off and two mode. Mode 1 is standard stabilization for everyday usage and mode 2 is for horizontal pans, great for shooting flying birds or cars moving horizontally. Last switch is custom C1 and C2. C1 is a dynamic stabilization and C2 moderate stabilization. This adds further stabilization control for different types of shooting. With L mount of this lens you can also customize these two control switches to different functions via the optional Sigma dock. Not removable lens color, it's rotatable, so once mounted on the tripod, you can rotate the camera on the lens to shoot in landscape or portrait modes. You can also rotate it to, to use it as a handle when carrying it like this. This has got also built-in standard Arca Swiss foot to connect it uh, directly to Arca Swiss tripod heads. As I said before, you don't put this lens on the camera, but camera on it, and that's why you need strap loops to connect the camera strap to the lens directly to avoid camera lens mount damage. The focus ring is very firm and smooth, but the zoom ring is a bit harder to use. It's not particularly hard to turn, it's just the lens's weight plus the size and how much rotation you need to do to zoom in takes some getting used to. As with other Telephoto Sigmas, you can zoom in by turning the zoom ring or by simply pulling the lens out. Whatever works better and it's easier for you. The lens is splash proof and it should take light rain or dust without being damaged. The price, this lens will retail for £2,000 or $2,000. Not cheap, it is an expensive lens. But look at the size of it. You get a lot for your money here. It's that 60 millimeter, the wide end of it, that makes it more expensive. That extra bit that makes this lens so much more versatile and a better all-rounder. If you can get away without it and you, if you don't need that wide focal range, then Sigma's own 150 to 600 millimeter is a much cheaper option. Also the Tamron 150 to 500 millimeter is much cheaper. Both can be easily found for 700 pounds or dollars less than this, even more if you shop around. In my opinion, that wide focal range is what makes this lens special and more desirable. Is it too expensive for what is on offer here? Well, it's not cheap, but great value for money in my opinion. Conclusion, it's a beast of a lens. It's not a lens for everyone for sure. It is a specialist lens for someone who not only needs that long zoom, that 600 millimeter, but also standard, almost wide angle 60 millimeter in one package, in one big and heavy package. This weight, 2.5 kilograms, might be a problem for some people. It's not a lens to run and gun with all day long, unless you weight lift a lot, but the quality it delivers is outstanding. And I do feel it holding it for this long. <laughs> it is a lens that truly lives up to Sigma's reputation and if you do need a wide focal range like this, this is the only one like it available that specifically is made for mirrorless cameras right now. Let's hope we are going to see it available for Nikon and Canon mirrorless cameras in the near future too. For now, if you are Sony or Sigma Lumix, Leica L-mount shooter, 
I highly recommend it. And this is it from me. I hope this video was in some way informative or at least entertaining. If it was, please give me the thumbs up. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. Tell you, word of advice. Never record spoken word outside. Birds, cars, people. What do you do? Whew. If you are a normal person, not a bodybuilder, would you be able to carry that with you all day long without pain? Could you? <laughs> this is this is definitely the heaviest lens I've held for 10 minutes <laughs> during the recording of the video. <laughs>